Welcome back. We saw the Rams pass rush absolutely dominate down the stretch of Super Bowl 56. Let's not forget they didn't have a single sack until there were just 43 seconds left in the first half. So how did things change so drastically? Let's turn to our very own Super Bowl champion, Sean O'Hara. To break it down, it's called Center of the Universe. Wow, you know you've officially made it when you have your own graphic. Pretty Great cool. job, Hammer. <laughs> the lead up to Super Bowl 56, the conversation, the narrative, was, can this Bengals O-line protect Joe Burrow? How are they going to slow down this Rams defensive front that has been dominating so many offenses throughout the entire season? Well, Frank Pollock, the offensive line coach for the Cincinnati Bengals, I'm sure he didn't sleep a whole lot leading up to the game. But look, the game started out great, right? If you're the Bengals and the Bengals fans, Burrow had time. The offensive line was giving him time. You just showed those stats. In the first 30 minutes of the game, it was clean. All right, let's take a look at how the Rams started the game and then some of the things that they did to throw some wrinkles into the game plan All against right. the Bengals. All right, here we are, and this is first half of the game right here, St straight four-man rush. We got a little twist action right over here, all right? But this is Aaron Donald and Von Miller on the same side. Kyle, you're gonna slide the center to the left, right? So we've got a freedom fighter over here, right? This is what we call the freedom fighter. He's sliding over there to give help, lets the, the guard can set out on Aaron Donald. They pick this twist up easily. This is great technique right here, great protection. Look at the pocket. Joe Burrow's back there comfortable. Yep. It's almost like he's got a stogie right, already right there in the pocket. So nice completion of Jamar Chase. Hey, things are looking good. Bengals fans, look, we're, we're slowing down this rush. We're doing a great job giving Joe Burrow time. But then the Rams started to say, all right, we're going to add a little wrinkle here. Here's an overload, right? We got three guys to the left of the center. And anytime a defensive line does that, you know there's a twist coming. And sure enough, here it is. Now, Aaron Donald's the penetrator. They're trying to shorten the corner for Greg Gaines to get around and get pressure on the quarterback, which he does. And it leads to a sack right here. Leonard Floyd is going to be the benefactor of this. But now the pressure is starting to get there. And it's all because of the pre-snap front. Uh, front and the twist game, but watch this. This is what happens. Look at, you, you end up with three guys blocking Aaron yeah. Donald on that twist because they're so concerned with 99 that it leaves room for other people. All right, now this is the second half, right? They go in halftime. Hey, here's where we're going to adjust. The center's sliding everywhere. We're going to go five down look right here. This is Ernest Jones right here, friend of the show, coming on today. Mm -hmm. And watch this twist right here. It occupies the center. Ernest Jones occupies him, twists away. Now it puts one-on-one -on -one over here with your right guard and right tackle. And watch what Aaron Donald does to this guard. I mean, mm. you want to talk about pushing him. Is that legal? You can do that? Off the cliff. Absolutely. Legal. This is the way to play. This was the way to play yeah. uh, uh, today that we just aired. Hands inside. There's, this is not, you know, head down. This is not in the face. Just literally putting a right guard on roller skates right here. Uh, cue the song. I got a brand new pair of roller skates. Look, <laughs> I mean, find your back foot right here. That's why you get in the squat rack. So you anchor down. That's right. Not happening. All right. Here's another look. Four down look right now, all right? Doesn't look too exotic, not a whole lot going on, but all the attention right now is on Aaron Donald. Rarely do you have the center and the running back going to the same side. Usually linebackers say, hey, screen's coming if that happens. But look, what they're asking for so much help to this side because of Aaron Donald and it one-on-one -on, -one on this side. And the right guard and right tackle don't pass this off, but it's a great job by Greg Gaines. Kind of, kind of grabbing that guard's arm a little bit. They got away with a little vet move right there. And Vaughn Miller with the big sack. Basically unblocked right here. I mean, yeah. they, they barely even touched the guy. It's a great twist game right there. Great little wrinkle. All right, later on in the game right Biggest now. Biggest play of the game. Yeah, yeah, game is on the line. Fourth and one. Look at where he's lined up. Aaron Donald is lined up over the tackle. That's how wide he is. So you're darn right. He's thinking about running that circle. This play right here, even with the center unblocked, the center's trying to bail his guard out. He sees it happening. I mean, it's like watching a car crash in slow motion. Even the center mm. can't get over there to help out his boy. But Aaron Donald comes through on the biggest play. And they, I mean, look at that rip move. And then mm -hmm. the vet move right there of after he clears that guard right there, the acceleration, the strength, the power to be able to run that circle and not get washed by the quarterback. Soon enough, my man, soon enough, that ring is coming. A little vet move right there, too. I don't know if you, if you see it. Next time you watch that play, after he clears the guard, he puts both hands on the tackle, right? He pushes off on Jonah Williams right there, and that's kind of what gives him that ricochet, almost pulls him, him through to get to the quarterback. So kudos to the Rams defensive coordinator, Raheem Morris. Did a great job adding some of those wrinkles in there. And listen, if it weren't for this Rams defensive line, they wouldn't be calling a Rams house mm -hmm. this week. Mm -hmm. Sean, if you were in, in, in the middle of your career and you had to block Donald, especially in one of those one-on-ones where you don't have help, what would you do? What would you try to do? 
Yeah, it's a great question. If you sit back on Aaron Donald, he's just going to walk you back on the quarterback like he did uh, Adenogy. Uh, I think you got to short set the guy, and a short set means you got to you got to get on him quick. So it's you know you don't sit a sit back. A vertical set is sit back, and you're inviting him to, to just push you back. A short set is I'm gonna I'm confronting you right now on the uh -huh. scrimmage, and it's a quick way to get beat. But like Bruce Lee said, the first meaningful touch in any battle wins. Punch. Can you so, cut him? Is there? I mean, can you? Do oh hell yeah, I would cut him. Yeah, you could cut. <laughs> right? we, we definitely got to slice. Bring out the blade. We got to slice him. We got to give him something to think about. Last year when Mahomes was under duress, the reaction was they have to go and get offensive line. Like Mitchell Schwartz is done and Eric Fisher is done and go get Tooney and go get Orlando Brown. Mm -hmm. Is that the feeling or is it just that Aaron Donald can do it to anybody this week? I mean, Aaron Donald has been doing it to offensive linemen all season long and, and throughout his career. But I think, yeah, if you're the Cincinnati, you're thinking, hey, look, all right, we, we, we need to improve a little bit. We can't let this be uh, the, the thing that holds us back. And listen, let's be honest. If, you, if you're the offensive lineman for the Bengals, like you, you feel terrible that you gave up seven sacks in the Super Bowl. I mean, they've yeah. done it before in the postseason. They were able to overcome it against the Titans with nine sacks, but not just the sacks. Like, as an offensive lineman, you don't get the, you don't get a first down on third and one mm -hmm. against the other team's nickel defense. Like, mm -hmm. you're hanging your head when you come off. So I, I know those guys are, are probably uh, not feeling so great about the performance, but the Bengals have some good offensive linemen. Look, they had they brought in Riley Reek through free yeah. agency, and they expected him to play. It didn't work out. Um, I'm sure they're going to try to add some pieces, but, mm -hmm. you know, there was a lot of debate Is about that is there anything the Bengals could have done from a play calling perspective to be better in this game? Or to, to his point about Aaron Donald being. Well, better. yeah, I mean, anything look, they could have done. We were talking earlier about it, like some more screens. You know, I think everybody expected to see some more screens and try to slow them down and kind of just get guys in space, get Joey Burrow out of harm's way. Uh, but, I mean, there's only so much you can do. At some point in the game, you're going to have that moment where, hey, someone's got to step up and block somebody. I, I think if I were to critique that final play, if I was the O-line coach, and I'm talking to Quentin Spain, the left guard right now, yeah. he had the center sliding to him. Yeah. There is no reason to get beat to your outside. All right, in oh. protection, I've got inside help, so I'm going to overset Aaron Donald. You're not going to beat me to the outside like that. If you go inside, I've got help. So that, yeah. that's that's where the critical error was, and that, that would be my coaching point. Center of the universe! My oh, man, good job, John. <laughs>